Hi everyone, welcome back to these processes from the Project Management Body of Knowledge. And now we're delving into estimating our activity resources. Now where does estimating activity resources fall in the greater scheme of our project? As you can see, we've been through, we're in the planning process group. So we're currently building out our project management plan and all the different components of that plan. And to do that, we've done our scope, our schedule, um, our cost, and our quality. And now we're starting to look at who needs to be required to do the work and what we need to do the work. So part of that is estimating and making estimates on what, uh, what those resources are required to complete the project work that we're looking into. So estimate activity resources is the process of estimating team resources and the type and quantities of materials equipment and supplies that might be necessary to perform our project work. We do this because it identifies the type and quantity and characteristics of resources that are required to complete the project. We basically need to have an estimate at some point, otherwise we just may not ever know until um, it's too late and then you know, by that time we're already executing the project and it will affect our schedule and cost. So we always need to plan upfront. Inputs, tools and techniques and outputs that you'll see are our project management plan, the resource management plan, so the process that we were going about to, to gather these resources and manage and control them, project documents, enterprise environmental factors and organisational process assets of course. Tools and techniques you'll see are expert judgement, uh, bottom up, all the estimating techniques, parametric estimating, analogous estimating, data analysis, project management information system which uh, gathers the activities and the people that might be required and the meetings to sort of put it all together and disperse information as necessary. Outputs that you'll see are the resource requirements themselves, the basis of estimating, so what have we, uh, what, what do we base our estimates on? Resource breakdown structure, so what is now the, what are the resources required and what is the, the breakdown of those resources required uh, as part of our project and what does that look like? Project documents updates will be an output as well. So as you can see, estimate activity resources has a really big input into project documents. So resource requirements, assumptions, lessons learned, um, and our resource breakdown structure as well. Let's look at an overview of estimate activity resources. So this process is closely coordinated with all of the other processes, such as estimating our costs because we're going to need to know uh, how much uh, acquiring these people or these things is going to cost for our project. For example, an automotive design um, team will need to be familiar with the late latest automated assembly techniques. Now this requisite knowledge could be obtained by hiring a consultant or by sending a designer to a seminar on robotics or by including someone from the manufacturing department as a member of the project team. So there are many different ways to acquire these resources. How are you going to do it for your particular project? Now inputs that we'll see as part of estimate activity resources are the project management plan, of course, uh, and most common for this is the resource management plan itself. So that's the process that we're going about to gather, uh, manage and control the resources that we agreed upon at the very beginning. And of course we might need our scope baseline because we need to know what we are delivering in the first place. We might see project documents as an input where we've got our activity list. So these are the activities that need to be done. Now we can start saying, well, who and what do we need to do this? Activity attributes, the assumptions log, any cost estimates that we've made so far, resource calendars, so who is available and when, and knowing that, that can impact the resources that we're looking at and who is available for our pro a project. And of course, the risk register for any risks that may have been raised or that we need to add over time. Other inputs we'll see are environmental, enterprise environmental factors. So this includes things like the resource location, geographic location. Are we all dispersed or are we all in the same place? Uh, who's available? Team resource skills, so the general skill set, maybe of a particular area within the organizational, organization too published estimating data that might be available, and general marketplace conditions. 
Organizational process assets are also things like policies around staffing. So how do we onboard staff and how do we get new staff external to the organization if we need to? Um, supplies and equipment, same. Is there a process for that? And any historical information regarding the types of resources that we should use based on similar projects in the past. Tools and techniques that we'll see for estimate activity resources. At expert judgment, as always, it should be considered from individuals or groups with specialized knowledge or training in team and physical resource planning and estimating. So this will help us estimate uh, you know, the, the planning uh, the, and the resources that are required. Has someone done this before and can we get their expertise? Now we'll have our es estimating techniques as well, where we've got bottom-up estimating, and we've seen this before, uh, where we're looking at the, the lowest level of the work breakdown structure. Um, and basically based on that, we're saying who needs to do this work and what is required to do the actual work in the nitty gritty stage as well. And then that, that goes up uh, and then that goes up again to overall, we're delivering an overall feature, for example. Analogous estimating is where we're using something similar. So is there a similar project uh, that, that we can see? And who did that? Maybe we can gather that, that expertise. Maybe we can use the same people. Maybe we can use a similar approach to estimating our activity resources. And parametric estimating, uh, of course, maybe there's a statistical relationship. So a parameter between historical data or other variables to calculate the resource quantities that we might need for this particular project. Tools and techniques as well. We might need data analysis where we might need to look at the alternatives uh, for our project. So maybe there's a few different methods. Uh, for example, the, the example before with the, with the automation, and there are a few different ways that we could go. We could hire someone, we could get someone from the organization, we could train someone. So we might need to look at those alternatives and see which one is best for our project. We'll need the project management information system as well, which again is that overall system involving the processes, the, the tools, the, 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 the IT systems you know, or the, the stakeholders involved, basically the overarching system of how we gather and disperse information for our project. So that information resources will need to go into that and also come out of that information system over time. Meetings, of course, we'll need as tools and techniques because we'll need to hold planning meetings with the functional managers to estimate the resources uh, needed per activity. So if we're using resources from a particular functional area in the organization, they're going to have the expertise and we'll need to build that relationship, that stakeholder engagement and management, and we'll need to work with them to figure out the level of resources required from their area. And that involves their availability and all of the other factors involved in gathering those resources as well. Outputs that we'll see as part of estimating activity resources are the resource requirements themselves. So now we have that as our output. And resource requirements identify the types and quantities of resources required for each work package. So this is uh, for each work breakdown structure branch at the, usually at the lowest level. So who is required to do uh, that work at the lowest level? and then ultimately we're delivering a feature, but maybe we need Billy, maybe we need John, and maybe we need Mary, of course. And, and wh whoever we need, whoever is the expert in that area or whoever we can get to do those items, that's now our resource requirements for our project. We'll need the basis of our estimates, of course. So what method did we use? We just need to write that down in our basis of estimates. The resources used to develop the estimate. So did we get the functional manager to help us as we saw? You know, they had the expertise in their area. They said, yes, we could get Mary and John and yep, that would be great. That would be fine. Um, assumptions that we used, maybe we're assuming that they're going to be available for this particular time. Any constraints that we might have, maybe John is on holidays for two weeks and so he can only start two weeks in the future or whatever those constraints might be the range of estimates. So maybe we've said we need them for five weeks, but that might include 20% uh, either way. So maybe we're saying it could be four weeks, it could be six weeks. That's our, our range of estimates. 
and the confidence level. How confident are we in that estimate and any documentation of identified risks that might influence this. So uh, what risks have we come up with? Maybe someone might leave the organization. Maybe uh, there might be currency fluctuations if we're bringing someone in external to the organization or from overseas. Many different risks that you might brainstorm with your risk team or your project team. The resource breakdown structure you might see as well for this particular project, similar to a work breakdown structure where we are decomposing or breaking down a higher level item into smaller items. So now we've got the personnel, the materials or equipment that we need. And so who is the personnel that we need? And we've got uh, different roles here and maybe they're a leader of a team and they've got a team under them. Maybe there's a team under them as well. So we're just breaking it down until we get to the, the final layer of the resources that we need. And of course, project documents updates. We'll have the activity attributes, so the different attributes required for the activities that need to be done as part of our schedule, uh, the assumptions log, any assumptions that we've made, and of course, any risks that need to be updated as part of our project as well. And those are all the details for estimating activity resources as part of the project management body of knowledge.